So I'm going to call this question a diagram question. I call any question that provides any visual input, any visual data, really a graph, a table, a chart, anything visual, I'm going to call it a diagram question. It just so happens that those, table, those, those tables are in the answer choices this time, but that's perfectly fine, right? We are going to need to reference these tables really hard in order to answer this question. So we're provided first and foremost with a system of inequalities. The question says, in which of the following tables are all the values of X and their corresponding values of Y solutions to the system of inequality shown? So even the question points our direction to the tables, right? So that's why I'm calling it a diagram question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first position in each table and I'm going to test it. The question asks, well, which of these tables presents um, X and Y corresponding values that, that are solutions to the system, right? So solutions to both the first equation and the second equation. So what does that mean? That means when I take x equals negative 2 and y equals negative 8, right, which is a pair, then I should be able to plug those into the first equation, or first inequality, and it works as a solution, and the second inequality, and it also works as a solution. So let's, tr let's test that out. So based upon the first inequality, I'd have negative 8 is less than 2 fifths times negative 2 plus 3. That leads to negative 8 is less than negative 4 fifths. I'm going to call this 15 fifths because 3 is the same as 15 fifths. And in doing so, I end up with a common denominator. And I'm left with negative 8 is less than 11 fifths. Definitely true. But let's try it in the second inequality. So here, I'd have negative 8 is greater than 1 half. Let me just make some separation there. 8 negative 8 is, is greater than 1 half times negative 2 minus 6. I have negative 8 is greater than neg half time negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 6 ends up being negative 7. So negative 8 is greater than negative 7. And that is not true. And because that's not true, that means all of answer A is incorrect. I'm going to erase this and move on to choice B. Now, what I notice about choice B is that choice B actually still has the same first order pair that choice A had, negative two, negative eight. And I just proved that that was not correct. So choice B is also crossed out, right? Because this point does not work in the second inequality. So now I'm gonna try choice C. I have this negative two comma three. So let's try that and see if that works. So again, X is negative two and Y is positive three. So this turns into 3 less than 2 fifths times negative 2 plus 3. So 3 less than, this is negative 4 fifths, again, plus 15 fifths. And is 3 less than 11 fifths? Actually, it's not, right? Because 15 fifths is 3. 11 fifths is smaller than that. So 3 is not smaller than 11 fifths, which means choice C is also gone which really means that choice D has to be the correct answer, but let's just test it out to be certain, um, make sure we didn't make an error somewhere else. So is it true that negative two comma two is a possibility? So when I plug that in, I get two less than two fifths times negative two plus three. We should know by now that that ends up being two is less than 11 fifths, which is correct. Um, for the second inequality, I'd have two is greater than one half times negative two minus six. So I'd have two is greater than negative seven. That is also true. So we have this first point that actually does work. And in every other case, the first point did not work, right? So I could go on and test these, but I don't want to because it'd be a waste of time. Um, hopefully you see that the strategy I technically use here was plug in answers, right? So I'm plugging in the data from the diagram. So I could call this like a diagram plus plug-in answer question.